Hi, I'm Mike Bailey, and I'm happy to represent our team. And uh, we are working on image-guided therapy for kidney stones. Uh, this is my disclosure. And kidney stones are very common. Uh, the, the effort is to manage the pain while waiting for the stones to either pass or require surgery. Uh, it, shockwave lithotripsy is an image-guided therapy that we would consider one of those surgeries for the way it's performed. And all these surgeries leave residual fragments about a third of the time. Uh, we have a, so our solution is a handheld transcutaneous image guided system. This is ultrasound based system to image, break, and reposition stones and fragments to facilitate their natural clearance with the urine. And this is done in awake subjects. We have two technologies, ultrasonic propulsion to reposition stones and burst wave lithotripsy, BWL, to break stones. Both are sinusoidal ultrasound pulses, pressure waves as shown in the, this figure down here. That shows the BWL pulse. The ultrasonic propulsion one is lower amplitude and longer duration. Uh, this is our probe. The imaging ultrasound is red, the black, is the therapy ultrasound and the whole diameter is six and a half centimeters. These are the acoustic output parameters. We do treatments of 10 minutes for research. Clinically, we would expect to do longer, something like half an hour or an hour. Um, uh, many uh, studies of our, our previous work are here at this website. And I'm gonna talk about three clinical trials. Uh, study one, BWL to break stones, two, the combination to clear ureter stones, and three, propulsion to clear out residual fragments from the kidney. Um, so uh, study one, BWL to break stones. In this case, these were patients that were anesthetized. They were going to get surgery where a camera is inserted in their kidney, and then the stones further lasered. But while they're anesthetized, before the camera is inserted, we try to break the stone with transcutaneous ultrasound. And then we look with the camera to see how well we did. We also look at tissue injury that way. And we are trying to measure comminution of stones to two millimeter fragments in 10 minutes. And so 65% of the stone volume was reduced to under two millimeter fragments in 10 minutes. And uh, the projected time to reduce the rest of it completely is uh, a total of 29 minutes. 91% showed fragment of the stones treated showed fragmentation. 39% were completely comminuted to under two millimeter fragments in 10 minutes. Uh, there were uh, just mild reddening of the papilla and some hematuria seen uh, as injury. And we compare this to shockwave lithotripsy. 60% uh, of clinical cases are uh, reduced to under four millimeter fragments in about an hour treatment. And there's always grace for maturia and some functional injury or loss. This is a 90 second video of BWL from inside the kidney. The yellow is the stone. You see the pieces coming off and floating to the right a little bit with the radiation pressure from the ultrasound. And um, uh, you can maybe see a little bit of bleeding happening. This is really quite minor uh, compared to what we would normally see with ureteroscopy. And the pieces are steadily coming off and there will be pauses in this where we realign or uh, reset the, the treatment and then start it up again. And you can see when it's on, the, this, this is not on, it'll start up again, it shakes and pieces come off. And you can see a little bit of the reddening above that we've probably caused. There's pieces coming off and I'll wait until this last piece comes off and uh, move on to the next slide. This was a four millimeter stone to begin with and was reduced down to under two millimeter fragments very quickly. So we pause again, a little bit of bleeding, 
not much. There goes the last piece. So uh, study two is clearing ureter stones. These people were enrolled, they were wide awake. Uh, we, we got a pain score, we put the probe against their, their abdomen and we tried to use one of two exposures to try to uh, move the stones along and, and facilitate their passage from the distal ureter. Um, so uh, overall, we, we applied two exposures, just propulsion or propulsion plus BWL. Um, and the total over here on the right, the uh, initial pain score from zero to 10 was, was pretty low. Uh, some of these people had come to the ED and were treated in the emergency department, uh, but their pain was managed by the time we treated them. Uh, but still it, it went down uh, over the course of treatment, not up, which is nice. And uh, the total treatment for, was about a minute for propulsion only, about 10 minutes for propulsion plus PWL, and about 90% of the stones passed in uh, about four days on average. Maybe you could see fewer days here. Um, this is compared to standard of care that 54, and this is not an exact comparison. We don't have a control group, but there's a huge database on distal ureter stone passage uh, in the AUA guidelines and 54% are expected to pass in seven and a half days. So we, we, we improved on that, it seems. And um, shockwave lithotripsy is only 74% effective when they do the surgery and, and even ureteroscopy is not perfect for removing distal ureter stones. Uh, and so some of the things we did, it was a movie of us pushing the stone into the bladder on the left and on the right, uh, we're using BWL pulses and you'll see a piece come off to the right up here. Um, so that's the stone, there's the piece that comes off. This is the stone being moved down into the bladder. So uh, we, we definitely had some effects that would be beneficial in passing the stones. And we did see people pass stones. And there was uh, very negligible side effects. Um, uh, only three of something like a thousand pulses caused any discomfort, uh, or this is under, under 10 pulses, only three individuals uh, felt uh, anything called discomfort. It was uh, like a pinprick. Um, and overall, uh, only two, ex two subjects felt worse after our treatment and 10 felt better. Um, There's a little bit of gross hematuria with the BWL pulses only. So some benefit and not much downside and all patients tolerated it well. Uh, so the third study is to clear out the residual fragments with propulsion. And so this is like inside the kidney, you see the pieces uh, being pushed with the ultrasound energy uh, or radiation force. Uh, so this uh, last uh, trial is a randomized controlled trial. It's not completed yet. We're enrolling uh, it's based on the power calculation up to over 33 per group. And, um, and they, these are wide awake patients again. They're randomized and we try to clear their fragments that have been there for some time after a surgery, at least three months. And um, we, or we don't if they're in the control group. So we have not completed this, so I won't talk about results, but uh, what we did was uh, at the AUA a month ago, we presented just a case study of the most recent patient at that time. Um, and that's what I'll show you here. Um, so this, this individual had shockwave lithotripsy for a stone. He never passed fragments as far as he knew. And they had seven imaging exams in eight, 17 months that confirmed there was this stable pile of fragments there. And so we enrolled him and he was randomized to the treatment arm. Um, and almost immediately uh, fragments began to move and about half the propulsion pulses showed visible movement and uh, the subject reported no pain at the beginning or end. And as soon as he got home, he telephoned to report he had passed uh, several fragments and had no hematuria or adverse events in the follow-up. Um, so, uh, this is kind of the uh, ultrasound view. This is a, a CT image from before his surgery showing the white shows his fluid spaces. The stone was about where the arrow was, the broken fragments, and the ultrasound energy is coming down along kind of that arrow and trying to push it up that white, thin infundibulum, uh, get the pieces to all move single file through there and out, and then they can come out here into the renal pelvis and down the ureter. Um, so next I'll show you all the other videos I showed were real-time videos. These are real-time, but they're spliced three seconds, three seconds, three seconds. Uh, so we have a total of seven pulses um, 
one after the other. So here we line it up in the oval. This is the bright spot of the stone collection. You see the fragments spread on that first pulse, some more movement of the fragments. Fragments, there's a one piece going, shooting off into the UPJ, clearing the path for the others to follow. And you can kind of see the fragment pile diminishing over time as, as the fragments are pushed out. And so this is the beginning, the large bright area of fragments and not much left at the end. And as that's what we saw clinically in the follow-up as well. Um, so in conclusion, uh, we've got image guided therapies that seem to work to break and reposition uh, stones and awake subjects. Uh, it's provided clinical benefits to these subjects. Um, NASA has adopted the technology and integrated it into their ultrasound system for space flight. And this has enabled NASA to downgrade their risk uh, assessment of renal stones to an acceptable level for missions. Um, in addition, Sun of Motion has uh, licensed the technology from the University of Washington and com is commercializing it. And they are in the process of conducting clinical trials at the UW and the University of British Columbia, uh, which we did not talk about results of, 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 the, clinic, of the company trials. Uh, the, I only talked about academic trials. The, the university sponsored academic trials continue at the University of Washington and Indiana University uh, for breaking and expelling stones in awake subjects. Thank you for your time and attention.